What is up, Attaché Nation? Nick here coming to you from my house in Napa Valley. Um, excited to bring you another episode of What's Nick Drinking? So I'm at Trader Joe's and I picked up some porcini mushroom and truffle ravioli. I am a sucker for truffle. It's my favorite flavor in the world. If I'm eating anything with truffle, you know I gotta pair that up with some Nebbiolo. Uh, so I went through the wine section and I'm checking things out. And I see this Barolo from a producer called Rosa del Olmo. I'm not familiar with it, um, but you know, Barolo, 100% Nebbiolo from Piemonte. If you wanna learn more about it, um, go to IGTV and check out episode two of my Versus series, uh, where we diagnose um, the wines of Barolo versus the wines of Barbaresco. Let's talk about this Barolo tonight. Um, at Trader Joe's, I see this wine and it is a whopping $14.99. That is super inexpensive for Barolo. These wines usually start about $30 and up. They can go up to you know hundreds of dollars for the really, really prime stuff. The single vineyards, the really prestigious producers. Um, so this is way, way underpriced. So I'm thinking like there's no way it could be good, right, at all. Uh, but it's 15 bucks, so what do I have to lose, right? So I thought I'd give it a try. Um, boom, so let's get some in the glass. And I'm checking out the color as I'm pouring it, and shockingly, it does really have that light uh, garnet color that's very transparent. You can see through it, which is characteristic of Nebbiolo. It's a very thin-skinned grape, so you can see through the wine really easily. It's really translucent. Um, it's got a little bit of a orange hue uh, at the, you know, around the rim. So, you know, it is this, this kind of light uh, garnet color um, that is really quintessential Nebbiolo. So already I, I like the color. Um, it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. So aromatics are actually pretty strong. I hold the glass down a little, you know, almost to my, uh, my chest here. And I can smell the, the sour cherry and the rose petal, um, the earthy dirtiness. It's all starting to come out really easily. So the nose is pretty. Yeah, the aroma is really earthy. There's kind of some, some, some pepper as well and, and herb notes like sage and rosemary. So, I mean, so far this is like really reminding me of Barolo and the Nebbiolo grape. So they're spot on so far, very pleasant, nothing uh, offensive. Okay, this wine is way too ripe to be true Barolo, um, but it is pretty, pretty fruit forward actually. This reminds me more of a Longue Nebbiolo, which is, um, not quite as high of a tier as Barolo. Um, it's really simple, the finish is pretty much gone, and really what turns me off about this wine, um, Barolo should have just like ripping tannin. Uh, it should dry your, the roof of your mouth, the, uh, the sides of your mouth, your gums. It even gets down to like the inner part of your lip. I almost feel like it's a, a collagen injection. <laughs> like you have anaphylactic shock of the bottom lip <laughs> where it's just, it's so tannic it makes your like bottom lip pucker up. Um, that's Barolo to me. Again, we talk about this in the Versus series. Go to IGTV and check it out. There's nothing offensive about this wine at all, but it is definitely not Barolo at all. So if you want a quintessential Barolo, I would not buy this at Trader Joe's. Um, for 15 bucks, I don't hate it. <laughs> I think it is actually pretty decent. Um, but like I said, I think the finish is a little bit short. Really the rose petal, it's very rose forward, very cherry forward. It's kind of soft and juicy in the mid palate. Um, 15, 2015 Barolo would be much more dry, um, much more earthy. There is some grip to the wine. There, I mean, certainly like very reminiscent of Nebbiolo, but I don't know if I would say Barolo. I wanted to hate it. I wanted to hate it. I wanted to come on here and just rip on it, but I don't hate it. It's very drinkable, but it's not Barolo. I did check out, I looked up the producer. 
and couldn't really find a website. So I checked out the back and I went to alatitudewines.com um, and it led me straight to the Bronco Wine site, which is based in Central Valley of California. Series California, right outside of Turlock. What up, my hometown? And shocker, uh, they're the people that make Charles Shaw for, uh, for Trader Joe's. So basically, I think what's happening here is they're having Barolo made for them in Italy, in Piemonte, in the region of Barolo, putting it in big bladders, like a, like a Franzia bag in the box, but picture like a giant one. <laughs> and it's coming over to uh, California and they are bottling it here under like a made up label. So um, when you don't pay for the bottles in weight in uh, the freight and shipping over here, you do save a lot of money. So that could be one way that they're getting this down to a low, low cost. This is not an authentic producer. Um, I, I, I doubt that there's much organic farming going into this wine. You're not supporting a family owned winery. Um, well, that's actually not true. All right, guys, I'm gonna get into this Barolo. I'm gonna let it soften up just a tiny bit and keep drinking great wine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw today, smash the like button. Um, you can also find Attaché Wine on YouTube and Facebook and also TikTok at Psalm in 60 Seconds. So look forward to seeing you there.